Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up the C++ development environment with Visual Studio Code on your Mac operating system. So let's get started and let's see how we can do it. So first of all, before starting with the development of our C program, we need to have the C++ compiler in order to compile our C++ code. So that you need to download first and then you can compile your C++ program with your Visual Studio code. So for that, the simple check whether the compiler is already there or not on your Mac operating system, you just need to open the terminal. To open the terminal, click on Spotlight Search and search for a Terminal here. And once the terminal opens, you just need to type this command, which is clang space hyphen hyphen version and then press enter. And if this gives you some kind of output, which says Apple clang version something, then the compiler for C++ is installed on your Mac operating system. Now, if this gives you some kind of... Uh, message which says clang is not recognized or this command fails, then you need to install the compiler. You can install the clang compiler in two different ways. Both will lead to the installation of clang and both these ways involves the installation of Xcode development tools. So if you want to install the full package of Xcode, which comes with separate IDE and several different uh, SDKs to develop various different languages, then you can go to the Apple App Store and install the Xcode development tools from there. I have already created a video about it, how you can install that. If you are only interested in development of C++ with Visual Studio Code, then I will recommend you to install the Xcode tools using this command, which is Xcode hyphen select space hyphen hyphen install. This is going to only install the essential Xcode tools and that also involves the clang. So if the clang uh, command fails, then just run this command. When I run uh, this command, it's going to uh, show me this uh, error because I have already uh, installed Xcode separately on my Mac operating system. So it says command line tool is already installed. Use software update in the system setting to install the updates, right? So in my case, I have already have this installed. In your case, you might want to run this command. Once you run this command, just check the version of clang once again with this command. And if it gives you this kind of output, then the C++ compiler will work. Once the compiler is there, Let's start with the C++ development with Visual Studio Code. So now open the Visual Studio Code. And here, first of all, we are going to open any folder in which you want to create your C++ program. So I'm going to click on Open Folder. And then I will go to the Documents folder. And here I have this Hello World folder, which is empty right now. So I'm going to open this folder. Now here I can create a C++ file by clicking on this uh, new file icon or I can click on the file and then click on new file icon. So I'm going to click on new file icon and then I'm going to name my file as main.cpp here. Once I uh, press enter, Visual Studio Code is going to recognize that I want to develop a C++ code and how it recognizes? because I have named my file as main.cpp. .cpp is an extension for C++. So, so you can see it gives us the recommendation to install the C and C++ extension pack, which is from Microsoft itself. So you can click on install from here. If you don't want to do that, then you can also go to the extensions section and here search for C++ which is also going to show you the same kind of result. Here you can see the first result, which is for C and C++. And you can see it's, and you can see it has been downloaded around 57 million times and it's from Microsoft. So it's the official C and C++ extension pack 
for the C++ development. So click on install here, which is going to start the installation of this extension pack. And once the C and C++ extension is installed, you will see the disable and uninstall button. So in future you can disable or uninstall it. One more uh, extension I will recommend here will be a uh, code runner. So just uh, search for code runner here. And this is the extension which will help you to run your code in an easy way. So I'm going to click on code runner and then click on install, which is going to install this extension also. So we have installed C and C++ extension and we have installed the code runner extension. Now I'm going to go to the explorer and then here type a very simple C++ program. So this is the C++ program and what this C++ program does is it declares three variables num1, num2 and sum. We assign num is equal to 5, num2 is equal to 10 and uh, then we are going to add these two numbers and show the output here. So nothing complicated about this uh, C++ program. You can find these kind of programs anywhere on internet, right? So now how can we run this program? So to run this program, you have this icon here. You can see uh, this debug C and C++ file. You also have this arrow here. From here, you can either debug your C or C++ file. You have the option to run your C++ code or you have the option to run a specific C++ file using this option. I also have the option to run my C++ code using this run button and then I can start the debugging or I can run the program without debugging. So let's start with this uh, arrow key and here I'm going to click on this option which says run code which is going to open the terminal and it's going to show me the output. As soon as I click on the run button, you can see it creates this binary file. So first of all, in the background, this run code is going to compile my C++ program and create this uh, executable binary file. You can see this main file is created and this is the command it has ran. And then after that, it's going to run this command and you will see the output in the output section, right? You can also go to the terminal and if you are a fan of command line, you can also compile your code from here. So let me just remove uh, this binary and compile the code once again. So I'm going to move this binary file, which is the executable file we have created once the C++ code builds. So I'm going to move it to the trash and let's build it once again and I can uh, just write clang command here. So just write clang. When you type uh, first three or four letters of clang, you can uh, see what are the clang uh, uh, command which are available for us. In our case, we are going to use the clang++. So I'm going to just write clang++ and then the name of the file which I want to compile, which is main.cpp in my case, then hyphen o which is the flag we can use to name our executable file. I'm going to name my executable file as main. You can name it anything. So you can uh, name it out, for example. Let's name it out. And this is the command to compile your C++ code using the terminal, right? So you can run this command on any terminal. It doesn't need to be in the Visual Studio code. I'm going to press enter which is going to uh, compile my C++ code. You can see it has generated this out binary, which we can run by using dot forward slash out and then press enter and it's going to give us the same kind of result. So you can also open the terminal and then run this command. If the terminal is closed from here, you can go to the terminal and then click on the new terminal and it's going to open the terminal for you, right? Now we have... Uh, compiled our code and ran our code. Now let's say you want to debug your code. So you also have the option to debug your code using Visual Studio Code. So here you will be able to see uh, the option to run your code in the debug mode. So you can see debug C or C++ file. And as I mentioned, you also have the option here, start debugging. But before starting the debugging, you need to set the breakpoint. So here you can go to the run and debug section. And right now 
it's not doing anything but when I set the breakpoint so I can just uh, click here and then set the breakpoint uh, on line number 5, line number 6, line number 9 and let's say line number 12. So you might have observed when I have uh, created the breakpoint on these lines you will be able to see uh, these kind of uh, list of breakpoints here in the debug section. You will also see the line number, so 5, 6, 9 and 12. You can also toggle these breakpoints by clicking on this button which is going to disable all the breakpoints. You can enable it once again or you can close all the breakpoints from here. So you can remove all the breakpoints by clicking on this uh, remove all breakpoints uh, button. And you will also see some more uh, options once you run the debugger. So let's run the code in the debug mode by clicking on run and then start debugging. And then it's going to ask us which kind of debugger we want to use. You can see you have C and C++ C lang build and debug active file. You have uh, C and C++ C lang build and debug active file. So we are going to use the second option because we are compiling or debugging the C++ file. If you have the G++ compiler, you will also see the option for uh, uh, GDB or G++ uh, compiler. I'm going to choose the second option. We start with C lang++. So click on second option here. And it's going to start the debugger. And first of all, it's going to give you this kind of warning which says developer tool access need to take control of another process. So I'm going to just give my MacBook's password here, which I use to log into my MacBook and click on continue and then click on OK. And then my debugging starts. Once the debugging start, you will see these button on top. The first button is for continue. So when you press on this, your program execution stops at the next breakpoint. You can also use this step over, step into, step out and you have the option to restart the debugging and stop the debugging using this button. Let's step over to the next line. So I'm going to click on step over button. And as soon as I do that, you can see num1 variable is printed here. And here the num1, the value which is assigned to num1 here is 5. You will also see num2 and num3 variables. But because we haven't executed the code on the line number 6 or line number 12, we haven't assigned the value to num2 and the sum variables. So here you will be able to see some random values assigned to num2 and sum variables. 1 and let's say 1, 2, 5, 7, 2. These are some of the random values because our program execution is stopped at this point. We haven't completed this line of code. So when we step over to the next line, you will observe that now num2 has the value of 10. Once again, we are stopped at this point. So sum has random values. So let's step over once again. And now sum have 15 values. So this is how you can debug your code. Once again, when you click on the continue button, your program will run successfully and it's going to show you the output here. So this is how you can debug your C++ code. If you want to create a launch.json file in the debug section, so when you click on debug and you have the option to create the launch.json file, so let me click on this file and it's going to create this launch.json file for you. So once it creates a launch.json file, you, you will see that this .vs code uh, folder will be created in your project directory and you will see these two files which are created which is launch.json which have the configuration related to your uh, debugger. Also you have the task.json file which have the configuration related to your compiler, right? So you can see this task, we have added this task here, which is generated uh, automatically for you when you ran this code using this button, right? So this kind of uh, .vs code and launch.json and task.json uh, are important when you want to share your code with other colleagues. So when you are using 
version control. Let's say when you click on source control and when you add this uh, code into some kind of git version control, then you will be able to see your changes here. And when you push your code to GitHub, some other developer is going to pull that code and he will be able to use the same configuration. That's why it's useful to create this kind of uh, launch or task.json files. So that's it for this video. This is how you can set up the C or C++ development environment on your Visual Studio Code Editor on your Mac operating system. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.